God, it's boiling in here. Jesus Christ. Basically, Nadia left the heating on all day, so I've come back to a house that is somewhat like a sauna. Blimey. Don't recommend uh, it. It's, uh, so you're warm. There's warm. snow outside, and you are warm. Sweaty. Like, but genuinely boiling. Uncomfortably warm is the is the phrase. Has the podcast begun? Is this how we're starting it? Would you? Oh dear Lord, no. Saying it, you will. No. no. We can do it. We can do another start the music thing and then do a proper intro. Okay, yeah, go. Cue the music. Hello and welcome to Stephen University. This time I got it right because I didn't want to get yelled at by Chris again, so I left a pause and just carried on. Uh, this week we that are discussing... Good. That went well. Yeah. Um, it doesn't really matter. It didn't affect you at all. It was for my editing purposes and stopping me every time just made the problem worse, but whatever. Uh, this week we're <laughs> discussing Know Your Fusion, um, which is an episode of Stephen Universe, would you believe, Chris? <laughs> we're discussing what? Genuinely. Know Your Fusion? Oh, okay, cool. I thought you said something about tears. I was like, what the fuck? Yeah, right, cool. Yeah, no, we are discussing no your fusion. That's fine. Phew. <laughs> Can you hear me okay? Do you need to turn me up on your end? I've... <laughs> I honestly, I thought you were just like, no, your tears. I was like, what? <laughs> no, 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 uh, your fusion. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, so this uh, this episode, uh, last week's spoofed uh, Roadrunner, this week's spoofed uh, late night chat shows. Mm-hmm. Um, so within this episode, Stephen and Garnet are all excited. They're getting ready to say uh, how they morphed into Smoky Quartz, introduce Pearl and Garnet to, to her. Um, they start the story. They're all excited. They transform. Uh, Garnet is giddy with excitement. Uh, Pearl is just shocked and, and you know, it's madness. Um, and then Smokey Quartz does some yo-yo tricks. Um, and then they are the yo-yos are caught by Sardonyx, uh, Pearl and Garnet's fusion. We are then taken to a secret Sardonyx room, which is like the set of a late night talk show. And Sardonyx starts interviewing Smokey Quartz about what, it, what she is, what she can do, etc., um, Smoky Quartz doesn't really have confidence answers, so they decide to do some tests. The tests are very much d- designed for sardonic strengths, but not Smoky Quartz. Um, so, like, well, they're, I mean, they're specifically, they're specifically designed for various fusions that have appeared in the show. So we, we've got um, we've got a bone arrow test for Opal. There's a Sugalite strength test. There's an Alexandrite flame breath test. So it's each one is based on a previous fusion we've seen. Mm. Um, and then Smoky Quartz sucks at them all. Uh, Sardonyx realizes uh, that this is because, you know, they wanted to impress them and they've just made it all about them, causing them to unfuse and the room begins to fall apart because the room can't survive without Sardonyx. Um, and then Smoky Quartz saves the day uh, with her yo yo. She manages to get them all out of the room. And the guys show genuine excitement for Sardonyx and, and get them to explain how it began, how, you know, the situation began and ended. So she's, they're like, tell it, tell it beat for beat, beat for beat. And we, we end on hearing uh, Amethyst begin to do that. Yeah. Yeah. I think it's, um, huh? well, I mean, how, how do you feel about it? Because I'll be honest, Chris, uh, not sounding your most enthusiastic. <laughs> yeah. Meh. Like, I think a lot of the, um, some of the criticism for last week's episode, uh, can be applied here. Um, there's, it's, it's fun to see the fusions as always. Um, but obviously we've, we've got, we've seen Smoky Quartz recently. Um, and yeah, I appreciate it's difficult because I don't want to get yelled at because I imagine that, you know, because there's fusions in it, this is probably a fan favorite. But to me, it was just, a late night spoof. Spoof. I think you could. Um, it's a, it's a, it's another prime episode where doing this podcast is a bad thing because this episode's fine. Like it's entertaining. I just personally don't think there's much I have to say on it. 
yet I have to for 25 minutes. So therefore, by default, as we talked about, I think even last week, I'm going to sound negative just because I'm just, you know, I'm picking out the reasons that I was a bit meh. Um, I think that the beats of the episode are fairly, it follows a path that you know it's going to follow. You know that Sardonyx is making it about herself. So therefore, you know that they're going to fail the tests and then something's going to happen, and then Smoky Quartz is going to save the day. Um, I think you can see those beats coming. Um, it's ve- it's more way more entertaining than last week's. It's funnier than last week's. The little references to the other fusions, in particular, um, the footage belongs to Cartoon Network yeah. um, riff, and the um, we still even though she's not here, do we still have to pay her? Oh, okay. Yeah, um, Nicki, and Nicki Minaj good... obviously voicing Sugalite. So yeah, that's quite. I yeah. love that joke. And there's a few, you know, good late night payoffs. Um, like when she's like, um, I hope you're buying those toys because otherwise we're going off air. Um, so there's a lot of good stuff. Just as a whole piece, I was just a bit like, eh, all right, okay. Yeah, I think... There you go. I, th- I, I sort of see where you're coming from. I'm a little bit different with this one because I legitimately think there's very little you can get out of um, last week's episode, which this title escapes me right now, um, Kindergarten Kid, because I think that is a, just a, 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 like I said, it's 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 designed really to be a bit of a gag machine um, and it isn't even very good at that. So it's, you know, there's as we talked about, and I'm not going to com- you know completely repeat the point, but the, the basic gist of what we were saying last week for those who didn't catch is just that it didn't manage to tick any of the Steven Universe boxes. No episode ticks all of them, but most episodes tick one or two. They're either really funny or they're really entertaining or there's something really heartfelt or there's a really good character moment. As we established, it wasn't particularly funny. The character stuff is stuff that's been previously established. You know, yada, yada, yada. It didn't tick any of the boxes in a particularly good way. So it ended up just feeling perfectly average, just functional, like it existed. And that was kind of it. I prefer this one quite considerably. And I think there are two reasons. One, it does have the funny. So it's at least ticking one of the boxes. And two, I do think... When you introduce a fusion the way you introduced Smoky Quartz, which... So I think... Okay, so what's what's interesting about the, the fusions is that most of them have existed for a long time. Um, obviously, Alexandrite, Opal, Sardonyx, Sugalite. These are all, you know, formations that these gems have made for years. So they know them quite well and they just they exist and that's that. And it's called the way that they're used in the show because they're never used with the reverence that the audience feel for them. And I think that's really cool because, yeah, the Crystal Gems wouldn't be that excited about forming Alexandra. They've done it millions of times, I'm sure. Um, But when Steven and Connie first fused, they got a whole episode to really meet Stevani. You know, there was that whole episode where she met Kevin at the club, you know, and all that stuff. And there was a really interesting sort of story at its heart. Um, So you would, when you think about the Steven Amethyst combination, you think like, well, I'm kind of interested to know what that is like. And then you watch the episode where it's introduced. And while we we both praised it really for just being awesome and epic and feeling like a big moment and all that. But it must be said that the actual characteristics of that fusion are unknown to us. So when the writers are sitting down to come up with concepts for an episode, I cannot at all fault them for going, well, wait a minute. This is a fusion none of them really know that well yet and has had a total of about six minutes of on-screen time, which is a joke they actually make in this episode. Um, You know, should we not take a moment to get to know this gem? And what story makes that function? You know, what what story gives us an excuse to specifically get to know the gem? And I think it makes perfect sense how they came this route. Um, The only thing is... I don't think we learn anything new. And I think that's really where they made a mistake. Uh, the, the core idea and how they got to the existence of this episode is correct. The thinking is correct. The, 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 I, nearly said the, I nearly said the fuck up, but that's a bit harsh. The mistake um, is that they didn't... To the, if the premise of your episode is let's get to know this character, then you need to ha- introduce some sort of characteristic or element to this character that we've not yet seen. And essentially, it's likes a yo-yo, and that's fine. And that's pretty much yeah, what we got in the what last it episode. All boils down but, to. But if you're if you're gonna and, and wants to be you know the self and wants to you know and has a has a uh, and, and isn't going to be in, have the the personalities of the other existing fusions forced on them, they're going to be pretty much themselves. 
that that's fine and you can do that as well but you do if you're gonna take up an episode to try and introduce this this gem then we do need to get more out of it than we got in the first introduction of this fusion yeah and the fact I, we don't hear, particularly that get that means that the episode doesn't have the payoff it should because if they'd have nailed that but so if we did learn something new about this gem's characteristics or this gem had a sense of self at the end of it um I think between that and the comedy, this would be this would be a really strong episode. It's just not ticking that second box, which is a shame. I think that's that's fair about it not ticking the second box, and I can see your argument for the episode. I'd I'd argue that we do get, that they do get the kind of the audience reaction and excitement for the other fusions um, from Stephen. I think Stephen represents the audience in those moments, um, and so. We've not yet necessarily, with the exception of um, Steve Oni, you know, had had that with with all the other gems. So mm-hmm. I I completely see your logic for why this mm-hmm. episode is needed. Maybe if for me personally, maybe if like you say, they they showed a characteristic we didn't see before, and we it was done in a format other than the the late night sm- spoof. Um, Maybe then I'd I'd be on more on board with that, and I don't really know because, like I say, they they sent up late night shows really well, and they um, that it had some really great jokes in it. So I don't know what it is about that format that makes that made makes me kind of react slightly are, less uh, positively. Are you positively sure it's the format you. though, or do you, I mean, like, is, is that definitely the thing that irked you? Because again, for me, it was so clearly just a lack of purpose. Because again, had I learned something new about Smoky Quartz, I think I'd have felt very, very differently about this episode. Um, I don't. I'm you, not but sure. You keep like, referencing uh, sort of the format as the concern, but I, I really think it's just that they don't actually do anything with the concept. But I think for me, the and like it could be like I know I've referenced the format a few times, but like I say, it's it's really difficult when an episode just makes you go oh, okay. Like it's really difficult to then be like, right? Why didn't you like it? Tell us. Twenty minutes go, um, which I know obviously you're not doing because you know it's the podcast. We have to do that. I think my thing with the with the format, if I was to dig a bit deeper on that and why it could be that, is because for me, the minute you go into that late night show and certainly the minute you introduce a um a test montage you go well the the whole episode is this and it's only 11 minutes long so the minute you're there the minute you're doing that test montage it's kind of like i say it's it's easy to see the road map it's going to take it's going to do some tests there's going to be an incident and then they're going to come round. And I think it's maybe my kind of the reason I keep saying maybe the format is one of the reasons that I was a little bit meh about the whole thing is because the format lends itself to predictability. Yeah. We've recently we've recently seen another spoof last week. Um, it, you know, it, so I think it, it, it traps you in a, well, we know what's going to happen as opposed to if it was, you know, smoky courts you know fighting a monster or something you know that's that's a bit harder to predict yeah no i i think I, yeah i see where you're coming from because I, I you're right once you set up the tests you sort of think yeah it's, it'll be three tests and then smoky courts will prove um yeah worth. and it's very again not only is the spoof element very similar to last week but last week you had the minute it's a montage of how are we going to capture them then you know where it's going. It's it's three or four so, attempts so at that. It's not necessarily then... the format for you, and it's not necessarily the uh, the lack of a, a, a you know a payoff. The thing that re- you think potentially affected your opinion most is the predictability of it. Possibly, yeah, yeah, yeah. 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 I, but I think I think it's. A, I don't think you. I don't. I don't think you can break it down. It, especially like I've like we we've, we've we've said before. It's. It's easy to break things down when you love something. It's easy to break things down when you hate something. When you're just like, yeah, all right, like it could, I could just be in a grumpy mood. Do you know what I mean? Like it's, it's, it's much harder. So I don't think, I don't think it, it, it can be or has to boil down to. It's definitely the predictability. It's definitely the format. It's definitely not getting to see something new on Smoky Courts. I think it's, a, it's a combination of things. 
um, that that just make me a little bit like meh. But I that again, meh isn't necessarily a bad thing. Meh is fine. Unless yeah. you have to analyze <laughs> an eleven-minute yeah. TV I mean, this show, does, for half yeah, an hour. This, this suffers for exactly the thing we talked about last week, which is, you know, <laughs> when something is either really bad, you can have a funny little rant about it, you know, or you can just, you know, sort of anger and negative criticism is is more fun, is is, is a more fun way to talk about a thing because there's just something sort of, mm. I don't know, there's something weirdly satisfying about sort of pulling something apart for its flaws. Um, and people feel weirdly comfortable to do that for, 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 for media and, and, and entertainment, um, which I find interesting because obviously you would never do that with a person and their work. Like if you knew that person, um, you'd be more analytical, but it's just really fun when you're some, somewhat disassociated to it. And it's also quite satisfying to explain exactly why something's great because you're excited about the thing because you really enjoyed it. You're absolutely right. It's when it's in the middle. There's, it, this is, there is nothing wrong with this episode. It is functional. It's fine. It's funny. It's animated well. It's a nice chance to see Smoky Quartz again. The pre- the, the the ideas and, and ways they got to this premise in the first place all make perfect sense. You understand how it came about. There's no direct or massive, huge, glaring flaw in it so much as it's just like it's fine. Don't worry about it. Like, yeah, and I, and I it's will fine. I I I will say like like I say it's very entertaining, and I will say fair play to them for because I mean I think you you even like teased it was coming uh, i think the other week you after we saw smoky courts you or maybe it was last week you made some reference to them finding out and i even then was just like well i assume that's happened off camera like we don't need to see that fair play to them for recognizing story potential in something like that and fair even play if, to even if they them missed, to be like, even if they miss the mark a little bit well let's play let's it, play uh let's play uh you know how would you have handled it? Everyone's favourite game from this podcast. You know, that famous segment we do. How would you have handled it? Um, what, uh, thinking about what kind, of, what kind of characteristic could you have introduced for Smoky Quartz um, at the end that would have maybe made, made that function a little better? Or is there something you could have uh, done on a character level that would have made it a bit more valuable? Anything particular that occurs to you? Because I, 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 str- I must admit, as much as I said that's what they should do, I'm struggling to think of something. Um, maybe, and this is like off the top of my head, but maybe if um if the thing that unites Stephen and Amethyst is and the thing that creates um uh, Smoky Courts is their insecurities and their uh f- their in their opinion failure to live up to who they want to be, but the the start of this story is. Oh, we defeated them. We really want to show that. Maybe you have Smoky Courts come Courts come along and and somehow. Smoky Quartz is too confident and that that confidence and that um that cockiness somehow leads to them unfusing or Smoky Quartz like welling up maybe the psychological analysis of these characters need to to be in that frame of mind to form Smoky Quartz I mean it's a slightly That's an interesting idea so it, cause, it's yeah, an cause... interesting idea I don't think it's right because you you kind of go well that's not a nice thing to think of that they've got to be insecure to form smoky courts you want you want the confidence cocky smoky courts um cuz that the, that side of those characters definitely exist as well but put on the spot that was the the first thought i think the other thing is you just have it have her be i don't, I don't know how you create an exciting incident for it but you yeah i don't know yeah i mean you could you, you could even reverse that idea you just had which is the uh, which is that you know, when they're feeling insecure that they're not able to form quartz, smoky courts because smoky courts is yeah, representative of, of when they're feeling better about themselves and when they're more comfortable in their own skin and, and, and confident and not worrying about living up to either their supposed potential or their mother. Yeah, and, and, I, and uh, I'll be honest, I thought that's where it was going. When they were building up to this big, we're going to show them, we're going to show them, I was like, oh, maybe the story is going to be that they can't form smoky courts and working out why they can't form her and how and and you know and what and, uh, I, maybe, and I, I do think that may have been a more interesting like concept for an episode but then again i suppose you do that then you don't get meeting smoky course which is i guess the starting point for the idea of how this episode came to be so i don't know yeah if that's uh, yeah that's worse, fair so. and and you don't get sardonics and i appreciate again that um you know for for fans the fact that sardonics was in it was probably huge and it's and it's nice given the storyline that we had around Sardonyx last time, 
it's nice yeah. to see Sardonyx just being a fusion uh, for the for, sake for of having funsies. a fusion and, and for fun. Yeah. 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 Um, you know. Yeah, and I think and I, on the Sardonyx side of things, by the way, I, I really like... Um, well, two things I like about Sardonyx. First of all, it's got a weird version of... Uh, uh, she's got a weird version of Pearl's Laugh, which I really appreciate. Mm. I don't know, there's something... Because it, it's blatantly a version of Pearl's Laugh, but it's just slight, slightly wrong. And I, there's just something yeah. so satisfying about that, full stop. But yeah, the <laughs> other the other thing of of, of, of all, the gen, uh, all the fusions you could possibly have to, to do this, I mean... I know that Sardox is the only one you could form, but because obviously the remaining two gems. But hell yeah. Like of all the gems that you could do this, I don't this would not have been anywhere near as entertaining with an opal or with a you know, with a Sugalite. No, not that either and, of those could exist because both those require amethyst, but you see my point. And as annoying as annoying as it was that Sar- Sardonyx couldn't see what she was doing wrong, which I think was another one of the reasons I was mad about this episode. I, I, I felt most felt most of it going, Well I I can see what's happening here. <laughs> how come? How come Sardonyx can't? And Sardonyx was just maybe a little bit too about herself. But that did fit. That did fit with Sardonyx. It didn't. That and element, her, uh, yeah. And her, whilst cockiness. irritating, didn't feel out of place. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, she, I think she's used really well here, and I do like as well this idea of um, that she's slightly more, you know, meta, slightly more fourth wall breaking than um any other character in the show um mm. you know with some pretty direct references to you know the show and it being a kind of stuff and there was something almost a little bit uncle grandpa about that but it was the right side of the line if that makes sense yes um, definitely yeah not so far over the line that you have to to make it okay say it's not canon do you know what i mean because as much as my defense for uncle uh, say uncle is well once they say it's not canon it really i don't mind if they just want to have five ten minutes of, of ridiculous fun whereas that obviously uh, bothered yourself um that's the only way you get away with that episode because the second you try to make that canon it's an absolute mess um in yeah because you can if you if anyone wanted to be really anal about it they could go oh well in the in the world, Cartoon Network exists, and you know they just—they've, yeah. You could—it's her memories, you know, being the, shown, and they the, put she's put the Cartoon Network thing on because Cartoon Network. Like you could, you could fansplain it if you had a problem with it being that side of it. Whereas trying to fansplain, say, Uncle is, you know, a, there a is a moment. <laughs> there is a moment in an upcoming episode that is so absurdly meta that it really does def- divide people. I think it's fucking hilarious, but it is a it's a divisive moment. I'm looking forward to getting to that I moment. I think you really. yeah, cuz I don't know how I feel about that cuz I'm never I'm never great with that kind of thing. I think you for, I'm a guy that's like if you're going to be meta, you should probably like that that should be the show from the beginning. Like I had a real Dan and I strongly disagreed before we even did the podcast. One of our first kind of podcast s discussions in real life was um, the chicken episode of Community because Dan loved it, whereas I felt it went a bit. And this wasn't a meta thing, but like it took the it took the spoofing a bit too far, took it way further than any episode had done previously. You felt you felt and in I a weird event- way they'd, they'd gone beyond their own remit, their own premise uh, to, the, yeah, to the point where yeah, it I damaged thought- the show to some degree. N- not necessarily beyond its own premise, beyond the reality the show had set up. I felt yeah, that the okay. show had set up a relatively grounded reality and they played with the line and I felt the chicken episode stepped way over that reality. The minute I became okay with it was when they basically then started doing it every week. And I think by the paintball episode, they'd done a few of them and suddenly it was genius because that that was the show. That was its first season, probably about halfway through. I think, Finding I its think feet it would a little be... Bit. Yeah, yeah. I think it would be season four of this if they started doing meta stuff often, which I know you've not said they do, but no, no. then uh, you know I would suspect no, no, they, they really the don't. There's side. just one particular, yeah, and it is a very short, easy to not easy to miss, but easy to dismiss and ignore moment. Um, they don't really draw too much attention to it, but it is like, <laughs> it is, yeah. I mean, it, 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 it head cannon. 
explode like some people's brains sort of melted with that one i think it's was there... i think it's the episode it's called, called steven's dream if people are wondering what moment i'm referring to um hopefully that okay. will give people some sense of what i'm referring to if they don't already know was there anything else like that any other references or anything like identified in the trivia that i missed or anything like that uh, that's a good question i know that the uh there's a cop on sardonyx's desk that says i heart ec which is obviously yeah. i heart empire city which i think is pretty cool um, that is nice. Uh, there's another little detail which I loved, which is when Smokey Quartz uh, says, "You know, don't put your socks back on." You notice if you look, one of Pearl's socks literally slides down to her ankle, <laughs> which I, which I think is a great gag. <coughs> but I'm um, actually gandering at the trivia specifically. Apparently, the background of Sardonic set is uh, the skyline of Empire City. Oh, um, nice! Which is again pretty nice. Uh, Garnet has taken was taken completely by surprise when she and Pearl finds out about the fusion uh, in spite of her future vision. This could be that Stephen and Amethyst fusion, fusing was not a probable outcome because she's talked in the past about it's not so much future vision in the certainty sense of the word, but it's about probabilities. So the most likely outcomes appear to her, which means Smoky Quartz was an unlikely outcome is what you can ascertain. Possible, but not you know, very small percentage chance of that actually playing out that way. Um, yeah, I think the easiest, the easier thing to do is to go. Eh, the show's going to have to use future vision when it wants to, and that you have to accept that the rules are flexible. Like, well, the, you to have be to fair though, what's good, what, Who, what, what's good about that is they've kind of built in that flexibility because the way they've described it isn't quite. I mean, we sometimes joke here and we go, "Well, she can see the future," but strictly speaking, she can't. The way she's described it and the way that. It's become clearer to me as we've done this, actually, than when I first watched it, because listeners keep telling me. Because <laughs> 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 we keep sort of half jokingly going, she sees the future, how does she not see that coming? We're obviously, we don't directly mean that, but the, w- what's becoming clearer and clearer because people seem really fixed on this uh, notion, I think that's good because I think it means the show has done a pretty good job for most of making this clear. But it's not necessarily that she can see the future, it's just that all the possibilities are laid out in front of her and she knows which are most likely and which are least likely. Um, so she can pl- she can play the odds, basically, and go, that's 87% okay. likely to happen. That's only 10% likely to happen. Do you know what I mean? Which is, which, yeah, which yeah, yeah. if that is the way it works, which is kind of how she's described it, you know, that she can see a few steps ahead of the road and she can see all the branches and she just has to sort of predict which one it's going to be like based on like probability um you can so that builds in a flexibility to her future vision that makes you go like okay so on this occasion this outcome was not a likely outcome or she would have seen it and that immediately makes it much more functional for a tv show because having a psychic in a tv show is a bad thing (laughs) it's the show's equivalent to it's the show's equivalent to timey wimey yeah which is the doctor who thing when they do the the time travel makes no sense (laughs) yeah for those who don't watch uh, doctor who um yeah so that's uh that's all pretty cool a little bit of un- uh, related trivia chris this is not on my trivia page but this is something that i think you'd appreciate and i was supposed to tell you this on last week's episode of nothing but static um sorry that right. wouldn't be last week from the perspective of this going up the episode of nothing but static that went up on the 18th of march for those listening to mm-hmm. this in the future we're recording this a little bit in the past we've, we're starting to catch back up and go ahead again so there's now about a couple of weeks gap again i think uh, but the episode that went up um, on the 18th of March um, of Nothing But Static, we talk about um, a movie called A Stupid and Futile Gesture. Mm-hmm. And um, mm-hmm. the, one of the actresses, or the actress in that that plays, you know, because the, the, that movie sort of boils down their cast to like, you know, stereotypes. And, it, you know, there's the, there's the girl one. Do you remember, mm-hmm. you remember the girl yeah. one? As they describe it yeah, in the movie. Yeah. Um, that's Natasha Leone, who's in Orange is the New Black and voices Smokey Quartz. Oh, cool. Um, cool. So it's just a nice... Because when, when I said to you in the last Smoky Quartz episode who the voice was, you don't watch Orange is the New Black, which, by the way, you should. It's really good. Um, you sort of... You know, you were like, ah, great, that's good, but I don't know who that is. <laughs> so, yeah, now you have some more context for that actress and her work. Yeah, there that's cool. Yeah. She's, yeah, uh, she's no, really I good. Should, I should... Orange is the New Black is on the list of, like, I really should watch that. <laughs> yeah, it's great. And A Handmaid's Tale is pretty good, too, by the way. Yes, I've heard it's stunning, actually. I didn't know you'd caught up. Finally, yeah, yeah. Me and Nadia watched it a couple months back. But, uh, just after Christmas, yeah. we watched it, so January. Okay, um, cool. we, we finally sat down and went, we've been meaning to watch this for so long. Let's give it a go. We're now re-watching Arrested Development, though, in the build-up to the fifth season. 
very excited. Cool. I didn't we know kinda that. Watch that they filmed we, the we, we kinda watch that yearly. Have they filmed the fifth season? Mm-hmm. Oh nice. They've cool. shot it and Ron Howard is doing his voiceover at the moment. So there you go. Oh nice. Cool. Sweet. Um any other little tidbits tidbits. Yeah, okay, so um in the strength tester, you like that little man. Small illustrations of the other character displayed to compare Smokey Quartz's strength. In order from weakest to strongest, it goes Pearl, Stavoni, Garnet, Opal, and Sugalite. Pearl is the only non fusion shown on the strength tester. Is that implying that she's stronger than the others, then? Uh, it's implying she's stronger than Amethyst, I guess, because Garnet w- is a fusion, obviously. Oh, of course. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So, yeah. But, yeah. I thought that was interesting. But Pearl is strong mm. in the real way, if you remember. <laughs> I do. <laughs> yeah. So, you know. I think, that's, I think that's exactly the kind of shit that has led to Amethyst forming Smoky Quartz. Yeah. <laughs> she's like, fucking hell, Pearl. Shut up. I get it. Strong in the real way. It's just an excuse to not be actually strong. It's fine. Oh. Great. You're emotionally oh. strong. Oh, you you know, you go to therapy. You're balanced. Great. You're you're happy with yourself. Good for you. In <laughs> in, in her in their slight defense, isn't that all those fusions involve one of them in some way? Yeah, they will do. So maybe it's maybe Amethyst mm-hmm. isn't on there because the room is those two. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Makes perfect sense. Um What was the other detail to that? Uh, oh, yeah, so in this episode, we established the potential that fusions can have their own room in the thing. However, the room can only exist, obviously, if the fusion is active. The interesting element of this is it is currently unknown if all fusions have their own room or if that is a specifically sardonyx ability. I assumed, based on the fact that Amethyst didn't know about it, that it's specifically sardonyx. I thought that too, and it makes a weird kind of sense for Sardonyx to have that power because she mm. has been able to materialize things in the past, you know, visually. Mm. Like, so I don't know if you remember when Sardonyx first appeared, a curtain sort of was drawn around her fusion and then pulled back and she had a microphone and like, do you know what I mean? Like there was a certain amount yeah, of yeah. like, there's a certain amount of what I call um, the Aladdin's genie powers. He couldn't, yeah, or, right, he, I'm with you. Because he couldn't, he couldn't make objects appear that would actually interact with anyone else. But for for visual gags and stuff, he could you know suddenly make himself be wearing sunglasses or materialize a you know a sign that said applause or do you know what I mean? Like he had this weird sort of metaphysical ability to and, I, and in a weird way it makes sense for a gem to be able to do that because if you remember they don't physically exist they can they're simply yeah. light so she can so, she's got more control you could argue over that light than the others and can therefore manifest visual physical objects but they probably don't have real mass and they probably uh um, i I doubt anyone else could actually interact with them that could be a that kind of power could have been one that um smoky quartz had given amethyst's uh, amethyst's ability to (coughs) shapeshift more than anyone else's yeah i thought Um, about that and steven steven being able to produce the shield produced you know uh the bubble and uh, you know they can they can both produce stuff in a similar way um individually well i mean every every gem can others, so. uh can can summon a weapon so the shield is the equivalent to amethyst's whip yeah, or garnet's Ste- gauntlets yeah but he's got his bubble too steven's, yeah, bubble. steven's yeah, weapon bubble. is is whatever the plot needs it to be done you yeah, know it's true. steven can steven can produce some shit <laughs> true true um this is officially the last episode of the summer of steven event chris which ran okay. from episode <laughs> and i swear this is true 88 no, 84. This was 20 episodes, Chris, that went out between July the 18th, 2016, and August the 12th, 2016. Well, they weren't wrong. Summer 20 Steven, it was. episodes in, what, two weeks? So, Three weeks? Ridiculous. It was mental. It was crazy. Um, and what's weird is when it finished on August 12th with this one, No Your Fusion, about a week later they had another one. <laughs> Like the next one's August eighteenth, so it's yeah, yeah. It was really crazy to get basically a season and a half of Stephen out of nowhere. Um, so yeah, it makes it even funnier that people were like, "Are you going to do the summer of Stephen when we first started doing the bombs?" <laughs> no, obviously not. <laughs> yeah, twenty episodes. It would be what? Like it'd be. It's basically four weeks of content, isn't it? Of nonstop content every day, yeah. five days a week. No, it's not going to happen. I'm afraid. Um, nice idea we just would never have the facility to do that um so um, you'd also run out of episodes quicker as you as happened with the show (laughs) 
Yeah, yeah, precisely. Um, when Sardonyx is shown defusing, we get a short glimpse of the silhouettes of Ruby and Sapphire, along with the Pearl, mm-hmm. you know, as has happened in the past when yeah. Alexandrite defused. Um, this is apparently the first time that we've seen Sardonyx defuse uh, due to destabilization. Pre- previously, apparently, Sardonyx diffused with intent. Because, the, yeah, because they'd achieved whatever it was they were fused yes. to achieve. Um, the Wilhelm Scream, which do you, you, I'm assuming you know about the Wilhelm Scream, Chris. Mm-hmm. Yeah, so if people don't know, it's like a very famous scream sound effect that's used in hundreds and hundreds of movies and TV shows. Google it if you want to see its use in many things. It's often used in Star Wars and a bunch of other stuff. Um, that can be heard as Sardonyx throws her pencils while talking to Smoky Quartz, which in itself is a reference to David Letterman specifically, who famously used to bang pencils off his desk and then throw them when he was doing his monologues. or oh, not monologues, but his, his sit-down to camera bits. Funny, interesting, unrelated fact, Chris... They had to mm-hmm. buy specially made pencils with rubbers on both ends because he was throwing the pencils around so much they were poking people and hurting people. <laughs> That's amazing. So they had specially custom built pencils that just had rubber ends on each side um, f- to be used on the set of the of the Late Show. David Letterman. <laughs> I think more stuff like that. Like if they'd have if they'd have made an effort to like try and reference. And I'm not like obviously this is unreasonable, so I'm not being like made an effort like how that phrase is commonly used. But if if the episode had included <laughs> nods to like all the late night sh- chat shows that were on at the time, I think that would have kept me really like engaged and guessing. Although it's a children's cartoon that airs on Cartoon Network, so I could see why they didn't spend too much time making sure that there was a Jimmy Kimmel and a Jimmy Fallon, you know. <laughs> Yeah. And now Sardonyx is going to read mean tweets. <laughs> like, I get why they probably didn't do that. <laughs> yeah. I mean, and, and you know, one reference to arguably the biggest talk show at the time, which was Letterman's. Mm-hmm. Yeah. That's that's a pretty neat yeah, little fair. nod. I, I, I think that's... Yeah. You could almost say that's enough if you're working under the logic of it is a kid's show. How many of these references will they get? Um, yeah, that's fair. So uh, the quote, you've made quite the impression already made by Sardonyx, could be a reference to Jailbreak when Stephen asks Garnet if he made a first good impression with Ruby and Sapphire, and Garnet replies saying they both already loved him. Okay, fair enough. Yeah. Um, and the, the last one I've got... I think that's a slight stretch, but fair enough. Yeah, yeah, very true, very possible, yeah. Mm-hmm. Um, Garnet asking for the play-by-play contradicts how she said we don't need the play-by-play to Pearl in Kindergarten Kid. So specifically in Kindergarten Kid, they were like, we don't need the play-by-play. And at the end of this episode, they specifically ask for it. So there you go. I think that's them learning. And it's a, you know, yeah, it's a yeah, result of the, of the lessons learned in the episode. Yeah. So there you go. Cool. That's we go. Know Your Fusion. Um, again, not the, not the most spectacular episode of the show. Certainly not the worst. Um, and yeah, therefore... If we pl- and therefore, playing just a if we, bit down the middle. Yeah, playing the if if we gave these episodes alternative titles, this one would simply be called. Eh. Eh. It's fine. Eh. Eh. It's alright. It's cool. fine. That's what this episode would be called. It's fine. And again, we talked about this last week, but I do want to reiterate: when you when this happens, the the most potentially interesting stuff to talk about is the stuff that worked. Uh, didn't work so if we sound more negative I, i'm still putting this in the plus column i'm still saying better than worse if that makes sense i i, I still enjoyed it more than i didn't enjoy it but it doesn't match and the it, heights that this show is capable of and has very recently been hitting uh, yeah? equally if if the next episode is similar then we're we're recording them quite close together and i i could just be in a grumpy mood so Tune in next week to see if to see if it's just me being grumpy. There you I go. think I was way more negative than you. Yeah. Well, let's hope that it works for you. So, that is everything for this week. I've been Dan Doolan. I've been Chris Billingham. And we'll speak to you next time as we discuss Buddy's book.